Next, we're going to forecast operating expenses. Operating expenses are those things that are not directly related to the building and selling of product. In this case, that's where all of your engineering, so R&D, comes in, um, clinical trials, um, SG&A, all of those things all come together on your operating expenses line. So generally for R&D, I kind of think about it in two separate buckets. The first is staff costs, and that's again just pulling information from the uh, employee cost analysis that we did at the top of the page. The second thing is the equipment that we need to buy. And usually when you talk to engineers, there's a very specific piece of equipment that you need to buy, or, or pieces of equipment that you need to buy. For these things, we want to go ahead and lay out when we plan to uh, incur those costs. This is just an example, um, but in this case, I put $50,000 in for something called an FDM machine. Um, this is just an estimate. Really, in your business, you're going to need to build all sorts of different or you need to purchase all sorts of different other pieces of technology to help you build. You want to lay out as much of that in here as you can. Clinical trials are a critical part of building a medical device company. Uh, they're also extremely expensive. Um, this is probably one of the biggest areas of expense that you need to understand. A clinical trial and the cost of a clinical trial is directly related to the technology that you're selling. If you're selling a diagnostic monitoring device that uh, does not have any therapeutic effect on a patient, it's probably a lot cheaper trial to essentially run um, a diagnostic test on a patient. If you're selling an implantable device that has life-saving uh, capabilities like a defibrillator, uh, an implantable defibrillator, the per patient cost of your trial is going to be very, very large because you need to pay for the surgery to place the device, you need to pay for the device itself, you need to pay for all of the follow-ups that are related to um, seeing patients. So um, understanding the complexity of your technology and the, um, the clinical proof that you require is going to really drive the complexity of your trial. Really the way to think about your clinical trial is to understand the number of patients you need to treat and then try to understand the cost per patient associated with that particular trial. Once you have that information, um, that will make up the bulk of the cost associated with the trial. So here's an example clinical trial cost schedule. So in this company, we've determined that we're going to do a clinical trial in year three and a clinical trial in year six. The clinical trial is broken into a bunch of different individual costs, and that includes things like insurance, regulatory consulting and filing, um, and then individual sites and the site costs uh, per site, and then the site costs per patient. So you need to figure out how many patients your trial is and go ahead and multiply all of that information together to determine the total clinical trial costs. Last but not least, uh, there are things called CROs, uh, clinical research organizations. These people can do everything from running your trial entirely for you to running the data collection part of your trial to designing your trial. So these are often great opportunities to talk to somebody about how to budget for a clinical trial. So if we now turn our attention to the SGNA, that's the Selling General Administrative uh, part of the workforce. That includes people like marketing and management and all the other pieces of the workforce. We can add up their costs. Again, I won't go through all the details, but you're going to start off with the staff costs and rolling up all of that information. You're going to roll up all of the facility costs. And then you're going to start adding things in like marketing and selling costs. So in this case, um, this particular company is, has a, actually a relatively modest marketing budget to help support all of the PR and branding work and trade shows that are required to support the medical device sale. 
Last but not least, there's just corporate overhead. And there's a bunch of uh, costs that I have uh, added to this bucket. Things like intellectual property, lawyers, accounting, insurance. All of these things need to get added up into SGNA. When you do all of that, you can get a full estimate for the total SGNA costs. And finally, to roll up all of your operating costs, you combine your R&D and SGNA costs to get a total expenditure for a given year. And this is information that we will plug directly into the income statement.